Uh, my name is Jesse Riding. I'm going to be tying uh, a high tie uh, sally right now. Um, it can also be tied in a caddis form, so high tie uh, caddis uh, in uh, various colors as well. I'm going to do the, stone, the sally version and then you can apply those same principles to another uh, color like tan or olive or something like that to uh, tie a caddis. Um, I have a 1x long uh, size uh, 12 uh, hook here. That's about uh, the largest you'd want for a sally, typically a size 14 or 16 for uh, other sallies or caddis as well, but I'll tie a size 12. Um, I start by uh, making the, uh, the little uh, egg sack uh, on a sally that's uh, typical on those patterns. I'm using uh, red thread for that. Um, if you've ever seen a uh, yellow sally, uh, sometimes it's an, a little bit of a reddish orange color as well. So I'm just tying down, tying on towards the uh, bend of the hook. I'm going to trim off the excess, and I'm actually going to make a nice prominent red spot there that's coming down just a little bit on the bend of the hook. And then I'm going to come up and make a nice thread bit base that we're actually going to cover so it doesn't really matter that it's red, but this fly is important that it has a nice thread base. So I'll go ahead and tie off. And since this is a yellow fly, I'm going to tie it now back on with some yellow thread. I'm just going to tie it right in the middle of the segment there. Trim off the excess. Now, this pattern actually uh, uh, was, was created because one of my favorite patterns is a simple outcare caddis. What I didn't like about an outcare caddis and the original design was that it becomes waterlogged really quickly and so it sinks, uh, as well as um, after a fish hits it several times, sometimes the hair can, can, can fall apart and I was just never happy with the, the, the splayed wing on it. And so what I did about designing this fly was to try to come up with something that floated better. It was a much lighter fly. Uh, the the Elkhart Caddis typically has some counter-wrapped wire in the body as well, and it just seemed counterintuitive that you'd make a dry fly with, some, uh, with a, any added weight at all. And so I went about designing a fly that was like the Elkhart Caddis, performed like it, fished like it, but was much lighter. And that's where I came up with the, the, the high tie uh, series, in this case, the high tie Sally. So um, uh, instead of using dubbing for the body that can absorb water, I actually use foam. In this case, I use uh, the Rainey's Yellow uh, um, Evazote in 1 inch, one eighth inch thick. And uh, this is just a small square of it. And I went ahead and, and, and cut just a strip off of that that's uh, not even a sixteenth of an inch thick. And that's what we're going to use to tie the body. So we tie on right at the rear with some of that. This foam can be pulled tight and crushed. It's an open cell uh, foam, but it can be uh, crushed really easily so you can minimize bulk. And this actually fly, um, what my favorite thing about a caddis and, and, and other caddis patterns is, is a nice splayed wing that actually uh, features the exact tent wing that a, that a caddis has or a fluttering caddis has as, as it comes out. And so we actually tie this wing in three s uh, separate pieces and it, it gives a nice profile to, to the fly. So the first thing I do is after I've tied on that foam, um, I tie in that wing in, in three in, in thirds. So I'm just kind of come down to the third, the one third part of the shank, and simply you just get a wrap or two of this 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 uh, foam. And I don't pull very tight at all because I want those cells to be open. It's going to help with the colorization of the body, as well as um, it's going to help with the flotation uh, of the fly. Uh, once we've now tied off that uh, that that foam piece right there at the one third mark, this is we're gonna we're not gonna trim off that. We're gonna continue to use that throughout the rest of the body. But this is where we're gonna tie in our first uh, uh, part of the wing. And so I'm using uh, natural light elk hair. This is a, a, would be a bulk bull elk, and as you can see, the tips are really really light and a nice color. And that, in my opinion, matches this really really well. I'd use dark if I was gonna do an olive or a darker or a black uh, a caddis or something, but in this case I'm going to use a natural light to, to, to match the, the body a little bit as well as to, to match the natural. Now you don't need a lot of, of hair in this case. So we just do just a little tiny pinch of it. You can see what you'd normally use in the Elkhair caddis, you would just do a third of that e each time because you're going to tie the wing in three uh, separate parts. So I comb out the under hair and I'm going to use a small hair stacker here stack the tips together pull out the hair stacker make sure the tips are lined up I can see there's a little stray in there try to pull it out good thing fingernails are used for 
and simply, you know, most wings come off the, the bend of the hook just a little bit, and that's where this is going to go. So I, I match up exactly where I want it, I trade hands to uh, do it, and I just secure that down. Three wraps, like so. And then I'm simply right here, so I can just lift that really easily, trim off the excess, and just wrap that just a little bit more. And to make this fly even more durable, I use Dave's Flex Cement and I glue it. Each time I finish one of these segments, I just take not even quite a drop and just glue that area right there. And then instantly you're going to wrap it with this foam. So I now need to just move my um, thread forward to the second, third section where we're going to do it. Uh, the second part of the wing, and I can use the same foam. You can cover those thread wraps. And the hair that you just did, keeping the, the foam relatively uh, uh, not pulled very tight so that you can have those uh, open cells and then wrap it forward and tie that off. It also creates, as you'll start seeing, a segmented body, which is really kind of fun as well. This is where I'm going to tie my second chunk of wing in. So I just get some hair out, make sure I have the right amount. I'm going to comb out the, uh, the under fur out of that, put in the hair stacker, stack it, it's always good to hold your hold the top portion down in so it doesn't bounce in there, hold it sideways, pull it out carefully, trade hands, make sure your tips are lined up, and again this one is going to match the same length, I'm going to end it right where the other one ended as well, switch hands, Secure with some thread wraps and simply just lift up all that excess hair, trim it down flat. A couple more wraps here. And I can go ahead and move my thread up to where I'm going to end my last wing. I'm going to save some spot here where I'm actually going to put some hackle. And I'm going to take some flex cement again, a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. And just secure those little ends, a little bit on the thread wraps and wing. And I just make another turn or two with this foam. Tie it off. This is going to be the last part that we need this, so I'm going to trim off the excess foam at this point. So you pull tight, trim, most of it sucks down in. I'm going to go ahead and back that off just a little bit. And this is where the third wing is going to be in. Again, you, don't, you use the same amount each time, just about a third of what you'd normally want to do on an elk hair caddis, which in this case is just a minute amount. Comb out that under fur. Stack it. sideways, make sure your tips are all lined up, and again, I'm going to go all the way back again and match it up with the back side of that, wherever I was, where that ends with the other two wings. Pull tight, and now you have a nice splayed wing that's tied in three segments, and it adds a lot of dimension to the fly from underneath. Trim off the excess. I'm going to wrap down to the eye, create a thread base for the hackle. This is one other element of elk hair caddis that's kind of there. Elk hair caddis has, th a th uh, um, has its uh, a body wrapped with hackle to aid in the flotation. And in this case, I actually uh, hackle the front portion of this fly. For this color, I'm going to choose to use a Coachman Brown um, saddle, dry fly saddle. And before I forget, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little flex cement to this thread wraps and wing. It also is going to add a nice base to sink the hackle down into and make it super dur durable as well. Wrap that down. I'm going to end the fly near the eye, so I'm just going to move my thread just a little bit, and I can start wrapping this hackle. And I'm just going to wrap down that tapered head that we created. 
and that's enough. I'm going to tie off. I hold the, the hackle point straight up, secure it with a couple of wraps. I'll do one more for the fun of it. Pull tight. Come in here and trim off the excess. Hackle. And then I'm going to use a little bit of saliva and pull that back and actually create kind of a head and that's going to help to pull some of those hackle barbules that are a little wild as that tapers down to have them all combed back properly and create a nice head. I'm going to tie off. Play with it a little bit, make sure the hackle's all facing straight. But if this wing, if you didn't get a nice splay on it, you can pull it from side to side to kind of get the, the, the display just a little bit before that glue f finally secures. And so you have this nice splayed wing on it. It's tied in three segments. And that is a nice, beautiful stonefly, little yellow sally. And you can do the same thing with a caddis. You just simply uh, don't put a red nub on it.